Hello and welcome to another out of spec testing video. This is a brand new Tesla Model Y standard and it has a very similar battery pack to the one found in the Model Y Premium, which is a long range version. This is actually a depopulated battery pack. So it's a little bit less capacity than the Premium version. In this test, we're going to run it all the way to dead just to see what happens. We're going to look at the behavior, see if the car does anything weird. And of course, we're going to see how far below zero it will go before it shuts off. Teslas always seem to have a bottom buffer that's pretty sizable. So I'm really curious to see what's in the bottom of this battery pack. Don't use this video as gospel. If you own a Model Y standard, you will get an idea of what happens when you run your car to zero. But just because we may get a certain number in this test, it doesn't mean that your car will always go 10, 15, 30 miles below zero, whatever we get here. A lot of it depends on current conditions, battery management system calibration, and so on and so forth. It's just an interesting test to see the behavior of the cars, the warnings that pop up as we run them to dead. And this time it's the Model Y standards go in our run to zero. This is the Model Y standard. It's the US version of the car. The European Model Y standard gets an LFP battery pack with I think the CATL 6M um, cell that's in there. This is using the NMC uh, or potentially NCA. I don't actually know offhand, but a Panasonic high nickel chemistry that's in this particular one. I've already done a charge test of this car and some other things. So stay tuned to the other channels and this one to learn more about the Model Y standard. Um, but as we do with all of our run to zeros, we're gonna start around 5% state of charge, drive the car until it hits zero, see if there's any weird warning stuff that pop up. And then we're gonna drive around the out of spec track here. You can take a look, it's a beautiful facility where we're gonna keep the speeds between 35 and 55 miles per hour with climate on uh, just to simulate, okay, sort of back road, trying to stretch it to the charger type driving. Because sometimes we do miscalculate it, sometimes there's mistakes that are made and we're just gonna see what happens. I'm also gonna put the car into FSD mode. This car is equipped with full self-driving supervised version 14.2.1. It's an older one actually. And I'm just curious to see what FSD will do when the car runs out of charge. We just tried this with the Model 3 long range and it did some really weird stuff down low that was on a different software. So I'm curious to see what this will do. Once we die and we run out, we're gonna bring this over, which is a Charge Rigs mobile DC fast charger. Shout out to those guys for sending it to us. It's an awesome DC fast charger that we can charge cars mobily. So Scott will wheel this thing out to us. We'll plug in the Model Y and then see the behavior of the charging from dead. The Panasonic long range cars charge super slow for like 10 or 15 minutes, somewhere around there. And then they ramp up. This again, same cell, different battery configuration. I'm expecting the same behavior, but as always on the testing channel, expect the unexpected. Weird stuff happens, anomalies happen, and electric cars do some weird stuff when they get drained all the way down. So it's time to go have some fun. The car is at it just dipped from five to 4%, it's at 4%. We're gonna drive it to zero and see what happens. So here we are in the Model Y. It's gonna be getting dark out, but um, it's about 50 degrees outside. The car's been warmed up navigating to a supercharger, so we'll get full capacity out of the battery. We have 4% state of charge. It's indicating 14 miles. I'm just gonna loop it around the out of spec track gently until we hit zero. Once we hit zero, then I will come over here into trips and reset our trip A so we can start logging the distance it will go after it hits 0%. This car is pretty fresh, 2,300 miles on it. It is sent to us by Tesla. So a big thanks to Tesla for sending it to us to run through all of our testing. I really appreciate their support on these videos. And in terms of drive modes, let's just see what we have. Dynamics, we'll keep acceleration and standard. It doesn't really make any difference. We'll keep regen on and all is good. Not many settings here in this car. We just put it in drive, drive it, see what happens when it gets drained all the way out. Let's go. So I'm having FSD actually take us around and it's washing the camera right there. I always think it's pretty cute when it does that. Um, plan your next charge. You are almost too far from known charging locations. And that is a dynamic based off of where you are on the map. And that's really the first warning that you'll get. You'll get the state of charge go yellow and then red, and you'll see a little bit of power limitation come in, but most people don't really look at that bar and you don't feel much. But if you're an enthusiast like we are, you would know 
to look at the power limitation. And you always know when your Tesla is about to run out of charge and die when the power meter comes really close to the available power. So I would almost use the power meter as a more accurate representation of how close you are to bottom bricking the car versus the state of charge calculation because this can sway over time as the vehicle ages some weird things can happen with the cells this is generally pretty accurate in terms of maximum power available given all conditions but everything's going well here in the model y we're just going to run it gently smoothly and um, yeah we'll reset everything when it hits zero but we always start this test around five because sometimes cars don't even make it to zero percent and that's the only time a car fails this test Every other time, there's no real right or wrong answer, I, I believe, at the moment. We're just benchmarking to see what every car does, if there's inconsistencies in behavior, and then we can try to hone in on, okay, maybe after testing 50, 100 cars in this test, we can say, yep, this is the way to do it, this isn't the way to do it, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just kind of fun, and people like to know what happens when their cars run completely out of charge. We are now down to 2% state of charge and it's getting dark outside and FSD doesn't really want to go as fast as it once did. So I'm going to just push it along. Again, the test doesn't really start until we hit zero. So I'm just letting it come down, I'm taking a look at any warnings or anything. But Teslas are pretty chill in terms of the warnings they give you. They, uh, they don't tell you too much. They don't freak you out too much. It kind of just shows you the state of charge right there. And if you're not checking the gauge, well, you could be SOL. We have just hit zero percent. I've got our trip computer reset 0.2 miles so far, and we are now in the official run to zero. No fanfare, no major warnings, no turtle mode, nothing popped up about hitting zero percent. It just went from one to zero. And uh, you'll see here, it still shows one mile of range remaining. So I'll let you know how far we've gone once that one mile goes to zero, because some people think in terms of miles, some think in terms of percent. If you think in terms of miles, you're wrong. Oh, and we did just get a warning that popped up. It says, plan your next charge. Again, another dynamic warning. It says, all known charging locations will be out of range soon. Ignore. And there we are. If you subtract our result by 1.2 miles, that's how far we've gone below zero miles. So we're totally zeroed out now. We are officially in the run to zero, or I guess it's the run from zero at this point because we're already at zero. But regardless, that's just the name. We're gonna see how many kilowatt hours and usable distance we have below 0%. And again, this car has been fully charged. It's been calibrated. It's ready to rock and roll. So let's do this. This Model Y is being so efficient. We have just gone 5.4 miles on one kilowatt hour. It is unbelievable. Granted, the speeds are a little bit lower, uh, but again, I'm getting it up to 55 miles an hour on the straightaway. I'm pushing an FSD along. It just got real slow as it got dark outside because it's like, oh, I can't see so far ahead, even though I've got it in Mad Max. And every time I push it, it freaks out like that around some tight corners. So I'll let it go and then I'll get back on the accelerator pedal and just bring it gently up to 55 miles an hour. And that's what we are gonna keep on doing, just simulating normal real world driving conditions you know, somewhere around here. Now FSD is picking it up. I'm off the accelerator pedal and it's given more. Now it's braking. Don't know why, but it's working just fine. And it's holding steady state. Perfect. But we are 1.2 kilowatt hours below 0%. We've traveled six miles. That feels like it would be like a normal buffer and then the car should die because you want, I think, the consumer to use as much energy as possible. You want to give them the most amount of real world usable range, but put a little bit extra in there, maybe just in case they miscalculate. Um, Tesla seem to just put a huge buffer in these cars, and I don't know what to expect from the standard range compared to the long range, but we're about to find out. The long range battery pack I just ran a couple hours ago did 5.9 kilowatt hours below zero before it died. That is a ton of hidden capacity that no normal user would ever be able to access because it's just so scary to run your car down below zero percent. We are now 12 and a half miles below zero. FSD still doing its thing out here and uh, 2.5 kilowatt hours used. We have a pretty big power limit, but nothing that's stopping this car from being safe or normal to drive. It's just cruising along nicely and uh, doing exactly what I would have expected so far. Teslas have a pretty big buffer. And this is, like I mentioned, a pretty fresh car with about 2000 miles on it. So this is the perfect time to log the initial run to zero 
but don't ever rely on this much range because weird things can happen with electric car batteries. They can develop resistive cells. You can have a weak cell group and you can hit bottom voltage before the whole thing. But I think they should be engineered to be consistent and Teslas are pretty consistent throughout life. So comment below if you happen to own an older Tesla and have run it below zero or if your car has died before you hit zero. I've heard about a lot of a lot of things, uh, that's me pushing it with the accelerator pedal. It doesn't love it. Uh, I've heard a lot of like Model Xs die while towing because they're under consistent load for a long period of time, for example. Man, it is dark out here, isn't it? But uh, I'm actually pretty impressed FSD is able to do all this considering there's no lines. The headlights in the Model Y standard are not great. And yeah, there's really almost no indication of where to go. And it's just driving with that. <laughs> pretty good. Merging on the straightaway, we've been driving again for about almost 14 miles past zero. That's full power. So FSD, when I push the accelerator pedal down, I feel no difference in acceleration. So it's holding it pretty wide open merging on the straightaway, which means we have a pretty big power limit even here at, you know, three kilowatt hours used. So I would say about 14 miles past zero. This is probably can maintain highway speed, but you just would not have much extra power for passing or hill climbing. Uh, again, about three kilowatt hours below zero now. That kind of seems to be the limit for highway driving. 3.1 kilowatt hours in and 15.8 miles. We have our unable to drive warning and Tesla's used to only go about a mile past getting this warning, uh, but recently I've been having them go pretty far past that message. The unable to drive warning is a really good indication to say like, hey, your highway power, your highway main maintenance power is pretty much down there. Uh, so it's time to get off the next highway, take surface roads, if you can even make it to a charger. That's how I would treat that message. Treat it like bottom turtle mode when you get the unable to drive message pop up. I am completely floored right now, just pushing the car a little bit. It will not go faster than about 45 miles an hour. When I lift off, FSD is just keeping it pegged and the accelerator pedal doesn't do anything. So we are definitely towards the bottom, just past 20 miles, holy smokes, four kilowatt hours used. Now again, the long range pack had 5.9 kilowatt hours. So I guess what we're gonna find out, is this a percentage basis of buffer or do they put the same amount of buffer below zero? And it's kind of feeling like it's percentage at the moment because um, yeah, we have almost no power and we've used four kilowatt hours past zero. I think Tesla should use that, put it more like a fixed number below zero, which would be like just hide maybe one or two kilowatt hours consistently below zero, have a manual vehicle restart like we saw with the Volkswagen ID Buzz for vehicle maneuvering at low speed. And I feel like that would just be a little bit more polished, a little bit more customer friendly because then you would give the user more energy before the car shows 0%, which means their same car effectively goes farther to them. We are totally floored and the car can't go more than 34 miles an hour, uh, 21.3 miles and 4.2 kilowatt hours. It's gonna have to shut off at any minute now. Um, as per testing procedures, I'm just keeping it to the floor. I'm really curious to see what FSD will do. So occasionally I'm just lifting because of course it's also trying to slow for some of these corners. Um, Yep, and I'm really curious to see what FSD will do on this software as we run the car out to zero as well. The last software kind of just stopped, but the car could have kept going. I was able to accelerate for one last little push after it had stopped in the middle of the road. If you recall that video, hopefully you guys watched that one. So we're merging back on the straightaway. It's gotta be out, almost out of juice. I'm completely floored. It's barely accelerating. That's everything that the car can do. I am to the actual floor. It says autopilot will not break. I'm, I'm off, I'm letting FSD do its thing now because it's gonna die here any second. It says pay attention to the road, don't worry. It's This is as fast as the car can go. FSD is holding it wide open. It doesn't look like it on the power meter. Take over immediately. I'm gonna push the accelerator pedal. So I'm pushing the accelerator pedal and it says take over immediately vehicle shutting down. So I'm not going to let it stop this time. I think it'll do the same thing FSD did before. It says pull over safely. Scott's coming behind us in the Rivian. So it's giving us just a tiny bit of juice to maintain speed. And again, I turned FSD off because it didn't seem like it was going to do anything. Hazards automatically turned on and the contactors have opened. You'll see now we have literally no power or regen whatsoever and we're going to die in the exact same place the model 3 long range died 
literally the exact same. So there's that for you. Model 3 also um, did a weird thing and it turned climate control and shut the screen brightness down. This has not done that. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe that's just something that happens if you get a big 12 volt load. Oh, there's the contactor. I just heard it go boom. It was at that moment that everything got super low. Yeah, like low power and everything, low power mode. I don't see that in this one. It says charge immediately so your vehicle will start and remain responsive. Vehicle is preparing to shut down. Let's open up the charge port. And all the warnings have stopped. The hazards have stayed on. Let's turn those off and let's get it plugged in immediately and see what the recharge behavior is like. I'm gonna use, um, once we're plugged in, we'll look at some nerd data on here. Before we do that, let's take a look at our battery pack voltage right now. Do, 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 do. Best way to do that is to go to our high voltage drive unit mode. Scott is working on getting us plugged in. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. If I come here to high voltage drive unit, oh, it has no drive unit activation. It says no battery power. Oh, there we go. Minimum bus voltage, 245.6 volts is the reason that the drive unit isn't going. Scott, would you mind plugging us in? Thanks, we're at 0.0% .0 on this. And if I come over here to the high voltage battery, it shows everything zero. Good health. Contactor. Yep, contactors just clicked. We are plugged into the charge rigs. How far did you go? Uh, I'll look here in a second. I don't actually remember. It says there's a latch is okay. Pre-charge is going. We're at 260 volts, 259 dead. And then it's pushing in juice. So it's doing about one kilowatt right now. And we did 22.4 miles with 4.3 kilowatt hours past zero. That's mom approved. You like that? Yeah. That feels like not like too much still. Uh, what the model three standard did 25. Did 30 miles. 30 miles. In the exact same or test. That was the long range one. Long range uh, one, yeah. And it was almost six kilowatt hours below zero. What is your, do you want zero to mean zero? I think you do the buzz thing, which is like a few miles past zero. Yeah, like five or six. I don't know. What I do know is my Mazda has 16 miles when it says it's empty. And that's a gas car. That's a gas car. <laughs> so like, I think that's the bare minimum is 15, 16 miles. So you like a big buffer. Well, yeah, but I run out of charge and gas all the time. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yep, we're doing the one kilowatt thing. If I come over here to our charging menu, this is uh, not in service mode, you'll see just uh, 500 watts going into the battery. That's very common for these Panasonic cells to just take a tiny amount of juice. So, yeah, no fans, nothing crazy going on like we saw with the long range car when we ran it out. It's just taking almost nothing and we'll let it do its thing. We have been charging for a little while. It's come off bottom pack voltage and started ripping full power. Let's take a look at the old screen. We've put in seven kilowatt hours. We are at 5%, ripping 68 kilowatts. Pretty good. That's the end of the test. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you think zero should mean zero. Is this the right amount of buffer? Too much buffer? Wrong buffer? Let me know. See you on another one again soon. Bye-bye.